Howdy gang, this is the Roaming Prepper, Pete here. And uh, today I'm gonna do some meal preps. Now I found, uh, the missus and I found, if we do meal preps during the weekend, we, A, we tend to remember our lunches, B, we save money, and C, we tend to eat better because we're not eating a lot of garbage. This is gonna be a real simple meal prep, so I just wanted to share some of my tips with you. Uh, this will be uh, chicken and rice with some veggies on the side and uh, just show you guys how I'm going to do that. So uh, I'll be right back and we're going to do some meal prep. Okay guys, so what I've got here is two cups of rice. I'm gonna rinse it, then I'm gonna stick it in this small Instant Pot container. This is the uh, four quart, not the six quart. I'm gonna use the six quart to do the main dish. So what I wanna do here is put a gentle shower and rinse the rice. Now, part of the reason you do this is so that you can get rid of that starch. And if you look at the water, you see it's a little bit like hazy. And uh, you do this for a few minutes and uh, let it get nice and rinsed. Oh, that was a bit too hot. Let's get a little bit more cold water in there. Let's try that again. And the reason I use the shower is so that it hits more granules and gets a good round rinsing. Now remember, if you're making rice in an instant pot, it is a one-to-one -one ratio with water. Uh, this happens to be jasmine rice. If you, uh, if you use, um, if you use a pot like a boiling water, it's going to be more like a two and a half water to one cup of rice ratio. So we're gonna rinse that and put that here for a second. I'm just gonna drop it in there. Bloop. Now I'm gonna take from my RO system, I got some filtered water here. Exactly two cups. And you can put the wet rice in there, the extra liquid is not gonna hurt you. Do one. Do two and um, now if you want to do uh, cilantro lime rice you actually mix the cilantro and the lime juice after you cook the rice I'm not doing that we're gonna do this one plain and uh, take it over here to the instant pot as you can see I've got my instant pot I will close my little lid set it to sealing not venting and then I'm going to cheat. I'm going to hit the rice and it'll do a countdown. Once it's, it'll take, uh, it'll warm up, reach pressure, and then it counts down. Once it's done, unplug it or turn it off. Uh, you don't want to, uh, do a quick release cause it'll boil and mess up the rice. So the rice is done. Let's move to the chicken. Alrighty. So I've got the chicken breast in there. You can see I've put the about a cup and a half, and I eyeball it, right? I try and keep the fluid level just below the, the metal rack or trivet. Uh, and that's it, I've seasoned both ends. Now this is thawed chicken. Uh, if it's frozen, you can still do this, but you need to cook it for longer. Once again, you, oops. Oh, you don't tangle up your cable, sorry, here we go. You seal. And then you do, what I like to do here is manual, 15 minutes. Uh, they recommend at least 10 if it's, or 10 to 12 if it's thawed, 11 to 13 if it's frozen. I like to give it 15 because we're dealing with poultry and that's a quick way to get salmonella if you don't cook it right. So I'd rather overcook it a bit. Remember, since you're doing it in an instant pot, it's basically a sealed environment. And remember to set this to sealing not to venting, um, the juices are going to stay in there. So you won't dry it out if you overcook it. Uh, you'll make it softer. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to let it 
get a few extra minutes in the Instant Pot. It's going to come up to pressure and temperature, hold for 15 minutes, and then turn off. And I will not vent it. I'm going to let it uh, sit for at least five minutes after it's cooked. So we're going to leave that and let that do its thing. So as you can see, uh, it finally reached pressure. The uh, little valve is up. Don't push that down. You'll have steam come out. It'll burn your fingers really quick. Um, it's set to venting. This is the rice. So this is the smaller one, the four quart. And right now it's heated. It's holding heat and pressure and it'll do a countdown. And then once it's done, do not vent it. Just let it do its thing. And then over here, this guy just reached pressure. It stopped uh, steaming. It's set to sealing as well. And it's countdown started. So the chicken and the rice tend to take about the same amount of time. So when I do chicken and rice, I do them at the same time. And, um, you know, just wait 15, 20 minutes and boom. So guys, I uh, gave it about 10 minutes after the timer went off. I uh, tried to turn the lid, it did turn. It didn't have any pressure to vent. I pulled the chicken out with tongs and I'm gonna put it in there. Now I'm not gonna cut it right away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in a Tupperware in the fridge. And then later on, I'm gonna put it on a cutting board and I'll cut it up into sections for distribution into our lunch boxes. And then over here, uh, this guy's off, but there's still pressure on it. I'm not gonna do a vent release. If I do that, what's gonna happen is whatever liquid's in here is gonna go to a boil. Uh, those of you who are engineers or science types is basically a ideal gas law, right? You have something under pressure and temperature and you vent it and the water, which is already past its boiling point, but it's not boiling because it has nowhere to go, will immediately go to a boil. It's gonna burn the rice and stick it to the bottom of the pot. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna let this bad boy kind of be happy. Uh, whenever that little nub goes down, I should be able to turn it and it'll come out. I'll then fluff the rice and put it in a container. And then later in the evening, we'll start pre-packing everything. But yeah, that's it guys, check it out. I mean, these are nice little chicken breasts. Uh, we'll cut them up and I uh, gotta make some veggies to go with them. And then we'll have, you know, four days worth of meals for me and the missus. Okay, so came back to the rice. You see that little indicators down. So I'm gonna take a spoon and test for pressure, no pressure. I use the spoon because the steam comes out in a big cloud and you'll burn your finger. Uh, I saw someone actually give themselves a second degree burn with the steam coming out of here, so you don't want that. Rotate, open it away from you, let the steam blow out if there's any, and ta-da, look at that. Two cups of rice. I do like to fluff it a little, so it doesn't get all become one big glob. Smells really good too. There you go. So uh, guys, remember, you can also use this technique before storm if you have a hurricane or something coming. Uh, make a bunch of rice and uh, steam it and have it ready and cooked. Rice should stay reasonably well for a little bit anyway. Um, I'm going to put these in Tupperware, stick them in the fridge, and when we're ready to, uh, when we're ready to start uh, making our lunch sets in our little lunch, we have little lunch Tupperwares, we'll put all our lunches in, uh, we'll be ready to go. So I hope this was helpful. For anyone traveling this week, Godspeed, and to everyone else, be ready, be safe, uh, help someone out if you can. Until next time, take care.